What can be said about Michael Bay's Transformers movies? Most people agree the first one was a decent action film, Revenge of the Fallen was kneecapped by the writer's strike, Dark of the Moon showed that the second movie would have sucked even without the writer's strike, and Age of Extinction came so close to being decent until it tacked an extra hour onto its runtime to set up more sequels. Let's be real, The Last Night is going to suck. Everyone knows it. The trailers are self-serious and self-righteous to the point of lunacy, the film only exists to set up tons of sequels and spin-offs, and this little girl reeks of a Ray clone. But even as bad as the movies have been, they did bring the Transformers franchise back into the mainstream. We probably have the popularity of the films to thank for Transformers Animated, Transformers Prime, War for Cybertron, and Transformers Devastation. The movies suck, but I'd argue that they still served a purpose. There's also video games tying into each movie, and, uh... Sheer law of probability says at least one of these won't blow. Let's start with the first one, Transformers The Game. The game follows the plot of the first movie pretty closely. Autobots and Decepticons head to Earth looking for a super powerful artifact called the Allspark. Shia LaBeouf has a pair of glasses with inscriptions pointing to it, government agency gets involved, and there's a huge fight in the middle of the city. There's a few weird moments where they cut a little bit too much out of the movie, though. Optimus somehow knows what Sector 7 is with them having neither appeared nor been mentioned the entire game, and Optimus refers to Michaela by name the second that she first appears with nobody having said her name aloud. So Optimus Prime is either psychic, or he's taken up stalking young women of a different species. I guess that's what happens when about 98% of your species is male. The controls are ridiculously stiff. The game won't let you turn or move in another direction unless you stop launching attacks for like three full seconds, so you often end up punching the air, and the camera control is abysmal. You control the camera using the Wii Remote's pointer, but the camera doesn't move until you point pretty well outside the boundaries of the TV. It takes about a full second for the game to react on the highest sensitivity setting, the camera only has one fast turning speed, and the camera only moves one direction at a time. You have to reset the pointer in the center of the screen to turn in a different direction. It's hard to explain, but the only way to turn is to spend several seconds violently yanking the camera around one direction at a time. You can't control it with any finesse. You can recenter the camera with the minus button, but the minus button is awkwardly out of reach on the Wii Remote controller, and you'd have to use it every two seconds. It's just a constant struggle to get both your character and the camera to turn in the direction that you want to go. Also, the game thought that it would be a great idea to convey the character's immense size by having the camera violently shake left and right every time that you walk. It seems worse with the larger characters like Optimus. This honest to god gave me headaches, and in the hectic fights the camera shakes so badly I can barely tell what's going on. The game has separate campaigns for Autobots and Decepticons. Each campaign is broken into four chapters, each with four missions, plus a final boss. The game has a pretty good variety to its missions, fighting other Transformers, chasing down and or destroying other vehicles, racing around the map blowing up structures, and then getting yelled at for destroying shit if you're an Autobot, and multiple Decepticon levels where you blow up a ton of puny human vehicles and blow up buildings. The game does a great job mixing up its gameplay, but each mission has its own headaches. The game's combat sucks. Most of the enemy's robots go down in a few remote waggle punches or a few seconds of fire from one of your two projectile weapons, but the game keeps pulling the same bullshit trick on you. Several of the enemies are completely immune to damage. Barricade and these guys who swing chains around you, none of your attacks do jack. You try everything until you realize you're supposed to pick up a nearby object and throw it at them, and that stuns the enemy so that you can get in a few hits. Same goes for the cement truck transformer and these flamethrower guys who shrug off all of your attacks, because sure, Holding a flamethrower protects you from getting hit by missiles and bullets unless someone throws a stick at you. The only way to hurt Shockwave is to bludgeon him with a tree or a lamppost. In the middle of fighting Brawl, this quarterback transformer keeps charging into you, stun locking and killing you in seconds, and the light projectile weapon that most enemies shrug off is the only thing that hurts him. Ironhide charges you too, and the only thing that hurts him is attacking him from behind. But oh, Megatron also likes to charge at you, but he's only vulnerable to throwing items, and they only work if he's standing still when you hit him. I am not making any of this up. The game keeps throwing out new enemies that are immune to damage unless you shove the remote up your ass or something equally asinine, and you're just supposed to figure it out through magic each time. It's confusing as hell. But here's the punchline, the fatal flaw that enraged me to no end. All of these enemies that are only vulnerable to thrown objects, and it's damn near impossible to hit enemies with thrown objects! Most of the time you push the grab button and nothing happens, even if the prompt is plainly visible, you have zero ability to aim thrown items, your character only throws items straight ahead of them, having already established you have to wrestle the controls for several seconds to face straight anywhere, you throw objects like a javelin so you miss if you aren't perfectly 
wind up within a fraction of a degree. Thrown items arc towards the ground, so you automatically miss unless you're at some magical precise distance from the target. The lock-on for projectile weapons doesn't work when you hold item for some dumb reason. You drop whatever you're holding if you take any glancing hit or sometimes just walk over a slight incline. You can't throw an item more than once, so you're constantly running in circles looking for new shit to pick up. Some characters throwing animations have them roll directly into enemy attacks or not throw straight, and even if, by the grace of Primus, you actually land a hit, the hit detection is so abysmal that most of the time, nothing happens. Every time one of these jackholes showed up, it led to 10 straight minutes of running around in circles, trying to pick up items, and trying to get a single thrown object to hit the damn enemy. The special enemies revolve around a set of mechanics that's completely broken and unfinished. Missed. Missed! That was a direct hit and it didn't do anything! So help me God, I'm going to rip off that cable and I'm going to go on you with it! Shit! Damn it! Why didn't that register? How the hell does swinging a chain in a circle stop missiles and Gatling gun fire? Why are none of my attacks working? Why won't you die? I will rip out your hydraulics and I will feed them to you, shit swizzling fuck! If you're doing literally anything else besides fighting other robots, the game actually gets to being kinda fun. Levels built around chasing down enemies in a vehicle form are thrilling and control pretty well, mainly because the camera sits still. Your biggest enemy for these levels is the physics engine. Cars seem to have almost no mass, so grazing an obstacle brings you screeching to a halt, you stick to most of the buildings that you hit, and any slightly uneven terrain can launch you into the air or flip you over. Only about half the terrain in the game is destructible, so you're constantly coming to a dead stop from grazing objects that you should be able to plow straight through. Hell, even debris from blowing apart the destructible terrain, once it actually hits the ground, it's treated as a brick wall that you can't pass through. You can drive in reverse to get around obstacles, but I suspect whoever programmed the driving has never actually driven a car, because the cars barely freaking move when you drive in reverse. Recovering from a single collision eats up so much time that hitting one object usually fails a level. You have to be perfect in driving missions. The Decepticon campaign is way, way more fun than the Autobot missions. Most of the Decepticons can fly, so you rarely have to put up with the shitty physics engine, and most of the levels revolve around blowing up human structures or nuking the shit out of human vehicles. The first four straight Decepticon levels have Blackout and Scorponok blowing up endless waves of tanks, trucks, and helicopters. You just point and shoot, it controls great, and the challenge comes from the sheer volume as dozens of enemies try to swarm you at once. It's pretty fun, and the perfect stress release after 20 minutes of being stuck in a level until you've thrown a perfect fastball in the Autobot campaign. The main problems with the Decepticon campaign are the flying controls. Blackout's helicopter form doesn't have ascend or descend commands like you'd expect, instead you use the stiff camera to point Blackout straight in the direction you want to go, but Blackout's controls work pretty well once you get used to them. The flying controls for Starscream and Megatron suck ass! The control stick turns you left and right, but pushing up or down on the control stick adjusts your speed. Actually tilting your plane up or down uses is the pointer, but the pointer doesn't let you turn left or right, so the basic turning controls are split 50-50 between two completely different schemes. Pick one damn control system and stick with it! For those keeping score, the Autobot stages have you play as Optimus Prime, Jazz, Ironhide, and over half the levels use Bumblebee. The Decepticon stages go through Blackout, Scorponok, Barricade, Starscream, and Megatron. I do like that each character has noticeably different projectile weapons. Bumblebee has a light cluster missile, Ironhide has a grenade launcher and Gatling gun, and Blackout has an EMP grenade. It doesn't really affect the combat, but I appreciate that the characters all feel distinct from one another. Each chapter is set inside a sandbox, five of the chapters reuse the same generic city map, but the sandbox format is completely pointless. There's a few bonus objectives that you aren't told about, like drive at top speed for five seconds or use a ramp as a ramp to jump really far. There's a hundred little cubes to collect in each sandbox, and there's challenges that are barely visible on the map and require collecting cubes to unlock. You won't want to look for any of this crap because exploration is a huge pain in the ass between the sluggish controls and the piss-annoying physics engine. The only rewards for 
for the collectathon are a bunch of concept art, a few pointless videos, and if you get 100% completion, a few skins from the classic show. All stuff that I don't give the static buildup between Bumblebee's ash cheeks about. The city level has its levels packed so close together that every driving stage turns into a damn maze, and most of the fights are overloaded with obstructions where the enemies can push you out of the level. The chapter where Bumblebee's in the Hoover Dam is a tight, claustrophobic mess of corridors and endless debris to get stuck on so that it's infuriating to get anywhere, and you can really tell they just ran out of ideas for the Decepticon campaign. The opening desert level with Blackout is just a huge empty field, the second chapter has you fight Bumblebee five times in a row, and the third chapter is just Starscream dicking around a tiny ass base. You finally get to play as a jet transformer, and all you get is one little square mile of map fenced off with invisible walls, and four short levels blowing up tiny structures doing absolutely nothing of relevance to the plot. Bumblebee escaped with the Allspark. I killed him half an hour ago! I'm gonna have to fight him another four times, aren't I? The sandboxes serve no purpose other than to add a commute between levels, and to add optional completionist crap to pad out the four-hour game. Each campaign ends with something like four boss fights in a row. Every boss fight, you just throw a stream of punches, the boss runs away and spawns drones, you chase him down and then do it two or three more times. The only thing that changes is sometimes you have to throw something at the boss's head first. Look at this, Jazz has to fight Starscream and Blackout at the same time, they've got me surrounded, pinned in a man sandwich, I'm just throwing basic punches and I'm beating the shit out of both of them. The last battle with Megatron was nothing but me running in circles for 20 minutes trying to find something to throw at him. This epic climactic end of days duel between Titans and arch rivals, and it looks like the world's dumbest game of tag. Come back, Optimus! I want to show you my cool flamethrowers! I know they kind of had to end the game like this to line up with the movie, but you'd think they could have come up with something better for boss battles than three straight rounds of shitty Rock'em Sock'em robots. I beat the Autobot campaign, and here's some footage of the tiny Cybertron Horde mode bonus level to prove it, but I was so beyond tired of the game's bullshit that I rage quit the Decepticon campaign. During his boss fight, Ironhide likes to sit his ass down in one corner of the map, throw up an everything proof shield so that you can't hit him, and start spewing grenades that stun you and deal tons of damage. He doesn't drop the shield until you kill all of the Autobot goons in the area. The second time that he does this, he spawns one of the chain-wielding asswipes, and the third time he does it, he spawns two or three of the buttholes. So you have to very carefully lure these guys away from Ironhide so he doesn't instantly murder you, spend 10 to 15 minutes trying to pick up an object, throw it, have it land, and actually register a damn hit, do it two or three times per enemy, and for some reason Blackout doesn't throw objects straight ahead of him where you're aiming so your shit always misses, and every time Every single freaking time I try this level, one of these dumb shits gets stuck on a wall three feet away from Ironhide. Take a good look, Blackout. These are the guys who are beating you. My only option is to walk right up to the grumpy black truck robot that stun locks you and kills you to desperately try and get them dislodged from the wall so that I can actually fight them. And the cherry on the top of Mount Bullshit, if Ironhide lands a hit on you while you're in Blackout's helicopter form, it's somehow a one-shot kill. I found this out after I'd spent something like 20 minutes trying to kill these broken-ass enemies with the broken-ass throwing mechanics and failing because the game is broken-ass. Blow me! I'm out! Transformers the game is a mixed bag. It's got some good levels and it actually makes you feel like you're a Transformer, but when it's bad, it's really bad. The controls are stiff, many levels are unforgiving in their failure criteria, the physics engine is a constant annoyance, and I will never understand the logic of building every special enemy in the game around a mechanic that just flat out doesn't work. It has a lot of redeeming qualities, but it's been a very long time since I've gotten this pissed off at a game. Make of that what you will. Now let's move on to the sequel, Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, and let me tell you, if you are frustrated with the first Transformers licensed game, this is the perfect game to play to soothe you. Soothe you the hell right to sleep! The game heavily streamlines the plot of the movie, cutting out all the human characters and skids and mudflap, but the plot is an absolute mess that's almost impossible to care about. A super old guy called the Fallen wants to harvest the sun. To do this, he needs a fragment of the Allspark, Megatron's dead body, the Matrix of Leadership, and two anonymous artifacts that you're never told what they do or why you needed them, but you spend half the game chasing them down. The first two-thirds of the story are nothing but the Decepticons chasing down everything 
on the Fallen shopping list while the Autobots bumble around wondering what's going on. Megatron lures Optimus into a trap and kills him, and then Jetfire revives him for the final boss fights. Half the Fallen's artifacts get collected off-screen, with the Matrix just spontaneously being in his possession at some point. Optimus somehow survives being impaled several times through the chest and escapes when the Decepticons leave his body alone in a room full of escape pods. Yes, they are really that friggin' stupid! And much like the movie, most of the plot gets explained in one blunt force exposition dump. I flew here to Earth to dismantle the Star Harvester and watch over the Matrix of Leadership. He plans to use it to activate the Star Harvester to consume Earth's sun and to create a multitude of new Decepticons. Part of the problem with the story is that both the Autobot and Decepticon levels are combined into one campaign. You spend half the levels directly undoing whatever you accomplished in the other half. Level 3 you chase down sideways as Bumblebee, and then in level 4 you run away from Bumblebee as sideways. You spend most of the game setting up the Fallen's plan, only to then foil said plan yourself. You just don't feel like you're accomplishing anything or working towards any goal beyond getting the game over faster. The game's cutscenes use the in-game character models that look but ugly up close. The Decepticons are noticeably way lower res than the Autobots, and the Fallen looks like he was pulled straight out of a Nintendo 64 game. The gameplay is ridiculously boring. Every level in the game is a tight linear corridor, and the gameplay is the most dirt simple beat em up you can imagine. You have two three hit combos that seem identical to one another, you have a machine gun that never runs out of ammo, and there's no practical difference between any of the enemies beyond how much health they have. Some enemies can block attacks, so you just spam the guard break attack that has terrible detection. If you die, you immediately respawn with no penalty. Dead enemies stay dead, and living enemies don't get any health back. So it literally does not matter. No matter how much you suck or how little effort you expend, you still win as long as you don't fall into a coma or something. The damn LEGO games punish you more for dying. At least they take away some money when you snuff it. So all you do for four hours is run down empty corridors fighting the same basic goons with the same basic remote flailing attacks with exactly zero effort required as you jump right back up every single time that you die. About 20 minutes in, the entire game just becomes an endless, tedious slog of fighting the same enemies over and over and over again. No variety to the combat, no variety in the levels. There's an entire stage where Bumblebee's escaping from a Decepticon ship that bald-faced recycles a few rooms about five times, only to recycle the same rooms a few more times for a Megatron level. There's not even any variety in the playable characters. The game cycles through Optimus, Bumblebee, Ironhide, Starscream, Megatron, Jetfire, and Sideways. Yeah, Sideways, that silver robot who got killed after a literal minute of screen time by a different silver robot called Sideswipe. They all control exactly the same. The only character who feels different is Jetfire, who has such long-ass attack animations that he's clunky and sluggish to use. They all feel the same, every level feels the same, NOTHING EVER HAPPENS! The only quasi-interesting element of the gameplay is the energy system. You have an energy meter that you can use to heal yourself, briefly supercharge your attacks, fire a powered-up projectile, and a super move that damages all nearby enemies. But the only thing you'll ever do with the energy is use it to heal. The supercharge wears off almost instantly, the powered projectile often misses, the super move rarely kills any enemies except for cannon fodder, it's not worth it until the last few levels of the game, they all burn through your energy, and there's no health pickups, so doing anything but healing is a waste of time. The super move is the only time that you actually transform, by the way. In this Transformers game, you'd never change into your character's vehicle form. You also have a dodge roll that rarely seems to work, and it's all pointless since dying does nothing but sideline you for three seconds anyway. There are exactly three levels in the game that are actually fun. There are two Starscream flying levels that play like a poor man Star Fox, but they're competently designed. Plus, you can transform to shoot behind you even though you'll almost never need to do it. But the sideways driving level, holy crap, it's like all of the dev team's creativity and actual effort was concentrated into this one stage. You drive through the streets of Shanghai. Nothing special, but you can transform to slide in slow motion along the street to shoot enemies. It's simple, but it controls great, it keeps up a fast and frantic pace, it's a creative use of the license, and it's just a fun driving stage. Plus, look what happens when you hit something. You transform, fumble around a little bit, and then you keep going without interrupting the action. That is clever. This level is freaking awesome, and it deserves to be in a much better game. 
as I get stuck in a wall. Damn it, game, I was trying to be nice to you. But yeah, three levels out of 15 not being tedious slog doesn't tip the scales in this game's favor too much. The boss fights are lazy. Were you excited to fight Demolisher, that huge crane transformer who tore shit up in the film's opening? He sits in one spot on the ground swatting at you while you shoot weak points. Were you curious about an epic battle with Devastator, that huge robot made up of five or six smaller robots with wrecking ball testicles? You get him to eat dynamite and then do quick time events. That's it. Plus his stage has a recurring glitch where you spawn outside the level, fall to your death endlessly, and have to start the level over. The boss fight with Optimus is a game of jump rope. I'm not even kidding about that. You jump over security lasers until one of them hits Optimus. You fight him for real afterward and he stun locks your ass. You just have to abuse Megatron's longer melee reach to kill him. The fight with Megatron drove me crazy as a kid and when I figured out how the fight works, I wanted to slap myself. All you do is block his attacks and his and his guards hits all bounce right off of you. The Fallen is a joke. You trick him into shooting himself. Now you're thinking with portals. And then he sits still and lets you wail on him. Any quasi-competent developer would have at least attempted to make some cool levels with Super Mode Optimus Prime, a giant robot with a freaking jetpack, but he plays exactly the same as the entire rest of the cast, and all he does is fight two of the most useless bosses ever. This ending is pathetic. And the game ends on a cliffhanger invented specifically for the game, where Megatron and Starscream run away to the fallen ship and find a huge army that they weren't allowed to use before, like two teens who weren't allowed to take Daddy's car out. Just turn two of the most well-known and compelling villains in the franchise into a complete joke. Revenge of the Fallen took me a piddly three and a half hours to beat, and there's pretty much no replay value. The levels are all tight corridors, so you'll find 90% of the collectibles on your first playthrough. There's also three episodes of the old TV show on the disc, which I thought was cool until I found out the real version of the game has nine episodes. Yeah, the PS3 and Xbox 360 version of the game is an actual game instead of this phoned-in kitty horse shit. The campaign has co-op where Player 2 controls a floating drone who can't move but can cast shields, fire its own bullets, and donate extra energy to Player 1, which is all super unnecessary since you effectively can't die anyway. There's a multiplayer arena mode, but it's a co-op horde mode that you'll get bored with almost immediately. You could try to pit Optimus Prime against Megatron for a climactic fight to the death, and instead they'd be forced to team up to kill waves of their own soldiers. There's just nothing to get your bunnies worth out of the game. It's three and a half hours of dull slog and completely shitty story, very rarely interrupted by knockoffs of a much better game, and one kick-ass driving level. The first game had some redeeming factors, but this one is just garbage. Well, we've got two movie tie-ins left, so stay tuned for part two, and we'll look at Transformers Dark of the Moon and Rise of the Dark Spark. One shall stand, one shall fall.